You see the drip, yeah, I fit it up. Hop in my car and get it up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. This video is sponsored by me and my protein donut company and my weight loss support group. For more information, click the links below in my description and thank you all for the support. Hello and welcome to McDonald's After Hour, where I tell you a frightening tale. So come, come, sit down my little chicken nuggets. You're in for a scare. No, we're not goosebumps. We are McDonald's. Bumps. Today's tale is called the BMI chart in the doctor's office. But before we start, make sure to subscribe. It's right below. Don't worry, we'll wait for you. We're very patient here at McDonald's. So go on, right below. Great, you guys are such good, beautiful little chicken nuggets. So cute, so tasty. Let's start. Quick content warning for BMI, intentional weight loss, and doctor's visits. If those things tend to bother you. Wow. That was a lot of trigger warning for literally visiting a doctor's office. Something that is a very normal, everyday type of thing. These watchers must be special. Please do not watch this. Warning, if you wanna stay in your obesity is absolutely healthy universe and not reality, do not watch. Seriously, don't. Just go to McDonald's and enjoy some nice family healthy fun. Remember, all food is treated equal. It's just energy going in your body and coming out. <laughs> so since I got out of a psychiatric facility, one of my main goals has been to notice my triggers um, so that I can understand the situations that I'm in and why I'm experiencing what I'm experiencing. And today I found one of them. Honestly, the trigger may have just been being at the doctor's office, um, but I also happened to see a poster, a BMI poster, that was directly across from where I was sitting in the doctor's office. Oh no, not that! Not the scary BMI chart. She's gonna tell me that a doctor had in his office waiting room a BMI chart on the wall? And he didn't give you a trigger warning. Did he? In a place where they talk about health, health risks and things that you need to change in order to prevent these health risks or get rid of them. What kind of doctor is this? And this poster, it could win an award for like the worst poster ever. I'll be the judge of that, okay? My little chicken nugget, I'll be the judge of that. I have the trophy, I will hand it to the worst poster ever. This one, Burger King, you get this trophy for having the worst poster ever and the worst food. McDonald's always wins. I'm gonna show it, so warning. Scroll away now if you don't wanna see it. Second time that she gave her audience a trigger warning. She is nice, we do not do that at McDonald's. And our food kills people. Straight up just flat lines them. People be having heart attacks in our line of restaurants. And we do not warn them, they just eat, eat, and eat until they're dead. And then they can decide if they don't like that or not. And surprise, nobody has complained. Not one. How can they? They're dead! <laughs> I really can't get over this group though. They need a trigger warning for a piece of paper. Well, first of all, they need a trigger warning for the doctor's office, and then they need another trigger warning for the piece of paper that is on the wall in the doctor's office. It's just a piece of paper with numbers on it. Nobody's dying. There is no sexual nature going on. No violence. The BMI chart is not PG-13. Here she is. <laughs> It's not that bad. Why did she hype us up so much? It's actually a piece of paper. So first of all, I love the top where it says, what does your BMI reveal about your health? I could just answer that and say fucking nothing. Hmm, I could look at quite a lot of people, a chunk, not a chunk, a chunk of people who are obese and can tell that the BMI chart might be something that they want to look at. If you are obese and have a high amount of body fat, the BMI chart might be something that you might want to look into. Actually, there are quite a bit, way too many people, mostly women, obese women on TikTok saying, food is fuel, health at every size, BMI chart mean absolutely nothing. Honey, if you are any of the people that just showed up on screen or your body is a reflection of them, the BMI chart is probably for you. It'll probably be a very good tool for you to use to hopefully motivate you to reduce your weight. Very interesting that it takes the daughter of a fast food empire to tell you this. Oh, you thought I was Ronald McDonald. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm his daughter. 
Ronalda, my dad's dead, okay? Thanks for bringing it up, he's dead. Anyway, the BMI chart can mean, in her words, fucking nothing to some people, some people as in who lift a lot of weight, they do not have an excess amount of body fat, they are not overeating, they are not binging, they have a good handle on food, they portion out their meals, they are not overdoing sugar, et cetera, et cetera. Then the BMI chart means fucking nothing. But to you and many people in this community and mine, it should mean quite a bit. That's probably why it's still on doctor's offices, on the wall, so that people in America, where our citizens are mostly obese, can see that their obesity is an issue. The cynical dude had a very scientific test used by doctors everywhere to determine if the BMI chart is something that you should give a fuck about. And uh, if you think that it's not accurate, just look down at your stomach, okay? If it says your BMI is high, but uh, you look down and you don't see a bunch of lard rolls, I guess it doesn't apply to you. I mean, it's a pretty, pretty easy test to do. There you go, kids. If you look down and your stomach is protruding and you're not pregnant, for the smart asses in the back, you know what we mean. If you have an excess amount of body fat and you look down and there's just an excess amount of body fat, or you look in the mirror and there's just an excess amount of body fat, the BMI chart is probably something that you need to look into. The people who get triggered about BMI charts and it really bothers them to the point that they have to go on TikTok and they complain about the BMI chart so other people that don't like the BMI chart can also agree with them. They can say in their echo chamber of the BMI chart is an issue and triggering and we just need to get rid of it. No more BMI charts on doctor's office's wall. Tell them, tell them we're getting triggered by a piece of paper. Are usually people that probably should look at the BMI chart. They are the people that overeat. They are the people that do not control their food. They are literally on TikTok, Big Mac in hand saying, BMI charts don't matter. <laughs> Never listen to a BMI chart. <laughs> it's not true. I'm perfectly <laughs> Healthy. I had to shout out the cynical dude because I saw that he covered this woman and I got the video from him. So thank you, cynical dude. I'll link your channel below. And if you are interested in seeing what he's all about, check it out. But it goes on and says, your body mass index uses your height and weight to estimate your amount of body fat. It is also a tool used to help diagnose obesity. Yes, because most people, like I said, in America are obese. So most people are going to be able to look at this chart and it will show them that they are obese and they need to take the steps to get to a healthier weight. But this chart's rooted in racism, Ronaldo! Everything is rooted in racism. Stop going to Disneyland and just don't enjoy anything else because literally everything is rooted in some type of racism. And quite frankly, if something like a chart that helps people know if they are obese or not, or give them some type of leeway of where they stand when it comes to obesity triggers you to the point that you're complaining on TikTok, you probably should not even be at the doctor's office at this point because the doctor will tell you with his words that you are obese. He might even pull out that damn scary fat phobic chart and bring his fat phobic finger to where your weight is and then slide it on down to that horrible triggering word called obese with absolutely no trigger warning. Okay. And then of course we have the timeless BMI chart that we're fucking never getting rid of apparently. That's right, baby. All this time, all these years, we've had this racist, fat phobic, triggering and evil BMI chart. We've warned people about the dangers of obesity. We've even warned people about this very restaurant. I think there were a few documentaries out, but yet we still come out on top. <laughs> You hear that, Papa? We're still making it. We're still making people fat. Now that's what you call a successful business. I could hand these BMI charts out right in my restaurant. And these sad, sad, fat, insignificant, uneducated people will probably just use them as napkins. BMI? Psh, do you mean Big Mac? Four I? That's what they say, it's just that easy. And the funny thing is, Below the BMI chart, they have a little diagram about why it is so unlikely that you are going to be able to lose weight and keep it off. Well, if you keep coming to my line of restaurants, yes, it'll be very hard to keep it off. But I don't think that's what the chart is saying at all. They're saying if you are having trouble losing weight, maybe talk to your healthcare provider. And I can't see what the extremely itty bitty tiny words are saying at the bottom, but I can see the bullshit coming out of those luscious lips, baby. Those luscious lips look lonely. May I make an offer? Just kidding, but I don't see what it's saying. You gotta show me, girl. You gotta zoom in. You gotta show your work and your references. Clearly. I'm gonna read a little bit for you guys. 
After weight loss, metabolic adaptation may result in increased signals for energy intake, increase in the hunger hormone, and decrease in satiety hormone. So yes, as you're losing weight, you're supposed to be at a calorie deficit, right? And once again, it should be a slight calorie deficit. If you are someone who was like me, who was eating over 3,000 calories, and then you just drop your calories to 1,200 and keep it there for years, and then you get to your goal weight, that's not very good. That's, that's, you're probably going to turn into a binger, as I did. So you're supposed to be at a slight calorie deficit, slowly bringing your calories down. And then once you get to that goal weight, you're gonna start doing a little bit more experiments, seeing how much food that you can add back in to stay around that weight so you can stop losing weight. For me, I was eating around 1,500 calories to lose weight. I simply just added 200, 300 calories, and then I stay about the same size. Some people get to their goal weight, they're eating 1,500 calories, and then they're like, well, I got to my goal weight, time to add a shit ton more calories in, and they go straight up to 2,500 calories, and they're my size. I'm a five foot two clown bitch. And then all of a sudden, oh, diets don't work. The body positive community is right. Everybody fails at diets. I can never be at the, the goal that I wanted to be at because I was eating 1,500 calories, and now I'm eating 2,500. It just doesn't make sense. Damn you, diet culture. Everyone always overestimates their maintenance calories. I did the same thing because I heard and listened to so many people saying, wow, you only eat 15, 1,700 calories calories, mm -mm, that's not enough, that's just not enough. You gotta eat, and my hungry ass, one person tells me to eat, I'ma listen, okay? I am not afraid of food. So I get it, I hear a lot of just things going on where people say, oh no, you gotta eat a lot of calories because you know you work out a lot. Let me give you a little example. I eat about now, 1500, keep in mind I now have a uh, sedentary job, 1500 to around 1900 calories. If I have a cheat meal or just a meal that's a little bit over in calories on the weekends, I'll go up to 2100, something like that, unless we are at Disneyland. But that's just my general amount of calories. I still work out quite a bit, but tell me why there are people who have desk jobs like me, do not work out even half as much as me saying their maintenance calories at 2600 and they're my height. Honey, recalculate, you got it wrong. Okay. And then what do they go on to say? Look at this little fucking thing they have in the corner. If you're having trouble losing weight, talk to your healthcare provider today. <laughs> Don't do that. Anything is worse than talking to a medical professional about your weight who offered to give you insight about weight loss. How dare medical professionals make my clients who come to my establishment aware of their health issues. We can't have that. No, not here. Mama wants to stay in business. Mama wants to make daddy proud. You know what? All these health at every size and, and fat positive people and body positive people who say don't go to the doctors, they're fat phobic. Oh, they're right. Come here with me in this safe space. You have nothing to worry about. We don't talk about health here. And if we do, we just mask it with other unhealthy food. You'll be perfectly fine over here. Anyway, I'm not too sure why she's so upset. They just said, if you have questions, ask. We're here to help, that's all. This person's mad that they offered to answer her questions if she had some. If you don't have questions, then don't ask. I mean, that literally sounds like a breast cancer awareness commercial. Like, if you feel a lump in your breast, contact your doctor immediately. If you want to stay in your fat, positive, food-filled fantasy, do not contact your doctor. Come to Mickey D's, the happiest place on earth. Hey, get out of here. I don't know if it was that poster specifically or just being at the doctor in general, but I started to sweat, I started to dissociate. You have disassociative disorder, the DID thing that Trisha Page has did a few years ago. Ma'am, I personally think that you are lying, but my opinion does not matter. The fact though that a BMI poster just sitting there on the wall, minding its own business, triggered this lady so hard that she apparently has DID and it made her disassociate by the sight of a BMI po Why are you in the doctor's office? Have you never been to a doctor's office before? They're all over the place. Now I say I don't believe her is because one, anyone can fake anything and say anything on the internet and become whoever. Two, because we all saw Trisha Paytas fake the whole thing. Three, it's now a very trending thing to fake certain disorders on TikTok or Instagram or just social media in general. And four, this whole community is very, very dramatic. I thought I was dramatic, honey. Have you been in the body positive community? On TikTok specifically? Drama! They like to attach themselves with certain mental disorders or other things to help give them brownie points or, or just give themselves protection so they become part of a protected group and they get to protect themselves from constructive criticism from a clown. 
like me. It's too bad because this clown doesn't care. I don't believe that Bernie Dawn is some ultra goody goody Christian. I don't believe that Big Ed is a good person and loves Liz. And I do not believe that this individual has the ID. I think she just said that so that her, her little fight can be more of a fight to her audience because she's got a certain type of audience that will be like, oh, you have the ID. Oh, oh yeah, you're right. And we will not constructively criticize you because you have a disorder and we cannot criticize a person with a disorder. I say flabber glabber. I couldn't think of a word, but I say we can constructively criticize anybody we want. So no, I don't believe her. Will I ever get the truth? No, does it matter? Not at all. Am I right though? Of course I am. I'm always right, this is my channel. And my heart rate shot through the roof and when she took my pulse, it was like a hundred. I don't think that was the DID. She really said, nope. <laughs> My heart could not be having issues because of my obesity. That can't be it. It must be the DID and that damn BMI chart. And I was just sitting there. She, she just exposed herself. If you're just sitting there and your heart is fighting to function, that BMI chart might be something you wanna fuck with. All that to say, I think it's very interesting how this kind of rhetoric can take a toll on our bodies. I just think it's very interesting that she and a bunch of people, most people in this community, cannot acknowledge how obesity can take a toll on one's body. Have we ever found anyone in this community that preaches about BMI chart and everything else that they preach about? I can't think of it right now. Anything else that they preach about that we spoke about in other videos. Has anyone ever talked about the risks of obesity? No. Has anyone ever talked about how your body can feel when you are obese? No. Has anybody even mentioned uh, one small risk of being obese? Never. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed the frightening tale of the BMI chart in the doctor's office. Thank you for watching. Make sure to hit the subscribe, follow me on TikTok, Instagram, and my restaurant. I'm gonna go back on TikTok and just watch my father's plan flourish through fat positivity. Thank you, ladies. You keep doing my work for me. I just get to sit back and relax. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. And uh, if you think that it's not accurate, just look down at your stomach. You see the drip, yeah, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drip, yeah, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. I've been on the flex since flex zone. Neighborhood all in your eardrums. I ain't never scared like